Now let's do some problems using the equation relating energy and frequency in a line. So energy is equal to h nu, or energy is equal to, since we know nu is c over lambda, this is equal to hc over lambda. So we're going to use those two equations in these problems. So we have a light, a, a laser that emits light at a frequency of 4.69 times 10 to the 14 seconds. Um, one over seconds or hertz. What's the energy of one photon? Photon is just this one particle. So we're thinking about um, light as a particle. So we have energy is equal to h times nu. We know h is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. That's Planck's constant. That's what we had um, in the, the section above. We talked about Planck, Planck's constant right here, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. That's h. And nu is our frequency, that's the 4.69 times 10 to the 14, you know, 1 over seconds or seconds to the negative 1. So your seconds and seconds over negative 1 are going to cancel, and your final answer is going to be in joules. And when you work that out, you get... There it is, 3... 0.11 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now, in the next one, they tell you you have an, um, a laser with a wavelength. So now they're giving you wavelength, 345 nanometers, and they want to know the energy. So at this time, this is wavelength, right? So you can you do two things. You can either convert to frequency and then use energy equals h nu, or you can just say energy is equal to hc over lambda and do it all in one step because remember nu is just c over lambda so I just substituted there uh, the problem is c is in units of what meters per second so we're going to need to look at our units we don't want to have nanometers here we want to have meters so we have to convert nanometers first so we have 345 uh, nanometers and there are 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers in one meter so nanometers are really small, um, and we end up with 3.45 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So there's a whole bunch of nanometers in one meter. So now we have uh, we have meters, that's our wavelength. So now I can say energy is hc over lambda. h is again Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. And I'll give you that constant, you don't have to memorize it. I'll also give you the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then divide that by lambda, which is 3.45 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And so your seconds cancel, your meters, meters cancel, and you end up with something in joules, and I totally ran out of space. Uh, the joules that you get are, oops, sorry, 5.76, 5.76 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you put this in your calculator, um, if, you, if you have an EE button, make sure you're doing like 6.626 EE, negative 34. If you're doing times 10 raised to some power, make sure you put this bottom thing in parentheses, bottom in parentheses. Otherwise, it's going to do this times this, and then divide it by 3.45, and then it's going to multiply your whole answer by times 10 to the negative 7. Um, so make sure that's in parentheses if you're not doing it step by step. Uh, the last question here is asking, what's the frequency? I drove over it. There you go. What's the frequency? That's new. Um, if you're given the energy. So this time we have energy. So energy is equal to h new. Um, we know h. We're trying to find new. So you can either rearrange this equation, right, divide both sides by h, or you can just plug it in. I'll show you the just plug it in methods. Here we have 4.5 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is equal to h, which is our constant. That's the 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And our frequency is what we're looking for. So I'm going to divide that by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. 6.6 six times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. My joules cancel, I end up with something in one over seconds, which makes sense because that is um, your frequency. So I got 6.79 
times 10 to the positive 14 seconds to the negative 1, 1 over seconds or hertz, whatever kind of units you want to use for that. So those are three kind of common problems. You'll have to do this for the lab. We're going to do a lab on, and we'll talk about the lab in the next section.